The most common collectible found in Zelda is without a doubt, the Rupee. You can find these things just about anywhere. In pots, bushes, chests, enemies underwater, stuffed in a toilet. How'd you get down there? Occasionally, they'll even take sentience to become God. My first testament is to subscribe to Shinto's. Rupees make the world go round. I mean, you can't even enter the first Dark World dungeon in A Link to the Past until you give a hundred of these bad boys to a dang monkey. Their name is Kiki. Everybody say thanks, Kiki. Collect enough of them and Link will have just about every expensive item he could ever wish for. But today, I don't care about making Link rich. I care about how fast I can find just one single rupee in every mainline Zelda game. For the sake of this challenge, I'll be hunting exclusively for green rupees and the occasional blue rupee. This is because not every Zelda game follows an identical rupee color order. Most modern Zelda games have adopted the same green, blue, red, and purple distinctions, but things still get messy sometimes. This is all to say, not every game is going to work the same. For example, in Zelda 1, where we begin the journey of Unk, the game doesn't actually feature any green rupees whatsoever. It doesn't even really feature rupees if we want to get technical. The two rupees it does feature is a blue rupee worth five and a flashing blue and yellow version worth one. So unfortunately, no green. I wondered if I would be able to find a rupee before even talking to the old man. So I journeyed around half the map and explored two dungeons trying to find a loose green rupee. But in the end, my plan failed and I was forced to commit several atrocities with my newly acquired sword, netting me one of each rupee type. Another example is Zelda 2. In an effort to create a very different experience from its predecessor, the entire concept of rupees was deleted. However, it's still a Zelda game, so we're gonna name our hero, walk out into the world to encounter some monsters, poke at a slime, and we'll get two. To what? Beats me, but we got two. I even got two more just to be safe. A Link to the Past is our first chance to actually get the beautiful succulent green rupees we're looking for. We could spend our time listening to our uncle explain, blah, blah, princess in danger, blah, I think I might die. We've got way more serious things to attend to. So if we're looking for green rupees, Where's the first place you'd check? The pots, right? Terrible answer, wrong. These pots only carry hearts every single time. How about the chest? Stupid fucking answer. 10 out of 10 times, you wanna go outside during a raging thunderstorm, cut up every inch of your well-kept yard, get in some push-up reps, and eventually we can find our first true green rupee. In Link's Awakening DX, the Game Boy Color remake, we simply start up the game like normal, get scolded by Mario, make our way down to the beach, and get our sword. After killing a few enemies, we can find ourselves a rupee. Now, hold on a moment. I didn't want you guys to have to see this. But Link's Awakening DX doesn't have any green. I know, I know. Supposedly the original non-DX version of Link's Awakening has green rupees, but it's all in black and white anyways. Also, I just put a black and white filter over the DX game. This isn't even the original. To solve this, I'll be taking advantage of the Link's Awakening Switch remake. So I do the exact same sequence of events to get my sword, a few bushes slashed and enemies killed later, and we have got the rupee. If I had done that from the beginning, we'd all be a little happier right now. Aside from navigating Ocarina of Time's menu and its lengthy opening cutscene, all I needed was a whopping 8 seconds to backflip off my porch and find the nearest rupee filled bush to finish this one up. Off to Majora's Mask. Getting our horse stolen into suffering from both emotional and physical trauma was gonna be our main roadblock. I hope he's okay. I stood back up to find the nearest patch of grass and those sick fucks gave me a blue rupee on the very first bush. But fortunately, a few bushes later, we found the green. However, seeing that Majora's Mask doesn't truly start until you become Deku Link, I decided to let the unspeakable nightmare horrors play out and have my entire DNA rewritten so I could once again find a green rupee. However, seeing that Majora's Mask doesn't truly start until you reach Clock Town, I decided to rummage through the sewers, talk to a strange man, until finally we can... <laughs> Until finally we can grab a green rupee. I'm gonna stop here before I convince myself that Majora's Mask doesn't truly start until you- Well, I'm bored of Zelda games. And I've got just the thing. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has a few special tracks that alter the looks of certain standard items. So on the Hyrule Circuit map, coins become rupees. And fortunately for us, they're green. Start up the track, kick a baby and a Wario out of the way, and we've already got ourselves our best looking rupee yet. Back to Zelda, 
unfortunately. We'll be tackling the Oracle games starting with Seasons. After our last few entries having these long beginning portions, it's honestly hilarious that the only information you're given prior to the game is this cutscene. Kinda looks like somebody duct taped him to a merry-go-round. Almost immediately, we stumble upon a troop of performers, the leader of which, Din, wants to dance with us. I also look like I just shit my pants when I'm around women. I think he's doing great. But before Link can change his boxers, an evil tornado threatens to steal Din away, so thank goodness we're here to help. And with that, uh, Din is taken away and turned into a blue rupee. Hey, I appreciate it, man, but I, I really am looking for green. With the world in chaos, I entered the nearest town, still hoping to find some rupees. I found a young couple with their newborn child who asked if I had any name suggestions. I named it Rupee because I thought it would be funny until I realized my goal here is to collect and steal rupees, and then I felt uncomfortable, so I left. Eventually, I explored enough to find the Hero's Cave, the toughest dungeon in the series. I made it to the end and acquired a sword. Let's not talk about what I went through in there. All that was left to do now was slice a few enemies and finally collect my green rupee. On to Oracle of Ages, a little more void falling, a little stalking, a little oops, I was actually evil the whole time. And Link is once again unable to stop this tragedy from happening. <laughs> not the monkey. Oh god, it's worse than I thought. Unlike Seasons, however, we begin the game with our sword in hand, so all I need to do is ignore the pleas of townsfolk in danger, accidentally click on a sign like six times, and after some lawn mowing, we have found the green. Time for Wind Waker, a game known far and wide for its opening cinematic. This beautiful sequence tells the tale of a young man in search of the one and only thing that could restore peace and harmony to his world a gold rupee. The struggle of this hero who fought so hard in the name of the rupees it just warms my heart. It's not even green. The poor soul must have been colorblind. I awoke on Outset Island, and after a nice little swim, I made my way to Grandma's house. It was my birthday, and I knew what my present was gonna be. <gasps> there it is! How sick and twisted do you have to be to set up rupees like this? Now I understand what he went through. Before I can make it to Granny's, I decided that stealing was gonna be just a bit easier. So I crawled underneath our neighbor's porch and got my beautiful, beautiful rupee. I tried to share it with this pig, but guess not. Minish Cap featured an opening cutscene very similar to Wind Waker, but I didn't care nearly as much. There's not even any rupees. That's obviously the Triforce. It looks like I overslept a bit, but luckily Zelda herself arrived to wake me up. I had a few chores to get done today, so Gramps gave me a little kiss for energy, and for some reason Zelda got out of there pretty quick, leaving me unable to take my eyes off the pots in the corner of the room. It's green! Goddamn right it is. Twilight Princess is known for being one of the hardest Zelda games out there, at least according to this Watch Mojo Top 10 list. I'm not gonna fact check any further. I knew I was gonna be starting this game without a sword and might be dealing with the same issues I faced in the Game Boy titles, so as I took control of Link, I was prepared for hours of exploration. <laughs> As long as we're here, I thought it'd be fun to check out Link's crossbow training. I've never actually played this game before, but uh, I think I'll be all right. Little did I know at the time, but I had made a grievous error. The Zelda wiki page lists rupees as a collectible for the game, so I thought it would be a fun detour during our main quest. Unfortunately, I can only read up to one sentence at a time, so how was I supposed to know that only orange rupees can be collected? I think this picture is new also, they just patched that in. Next! Up now was Phantom Hourglass, and all I had to do was what I do best, ignore an old man and break his shit for my own benefit. And maybe I'll grab some more just for good measure. Hopping off the boat to our next destination, it was time for Spirit Tracks, and aside from the fact that I accidentally downloaded the wrong version to my very, very real physical DS. All we needed was some hearty rock throwing and we could add another green to our collection. I thought cutting grass and breaking pots was going to be the way we got most of these rupees, but I'd just like to thank the rocks for their service as well. Thank you. Skyward Sword is a wonderful addition to this challenge solely because of this little button right down here. I was hoping it would skip me to the credits. You found a blue rupee. Better drop it in your wallet for now. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. I found my way to the nearest pot collection and uh, 
Well, I don't know how to throw them. The game only tells me how to pick up and put down, so pot breaking must be simply impossible. I ventured outside and did the first quest to help save Instructor Horwell's pet. Maybe if I squint hard enough, I could pretend she's a green rupee? On completion of the quest, I was offered a reward and there was no squinting that could save this tragedy. I went to try again with some pots outside, but I got scared, so I ran away. I tried some bigger pots, no such luck. Tried sneaking into people's rooms, Nope. Until something incredible happened in the bath. After a nice good soak, I picked up another big vase and by pure accident hit the help button. God, do I need that. I discovered through a very hidden and very secretive method that you could in fact throw pots. So I got to work. It was on site for any breakable glassware within a five mile radius and finally, Green. Otherwise, about 20 hours into the game, you can find this blue bokoblin in the fire sanctuary and he'll drop a green rupee. These are probably the only two green rupees in the entire game. Falling down from the heavens, we're smashing into Four Swords Adventures. This isn't technically a mainline Zelda game, but it's long ass opening would make you think otherwise. After all, the maidens are sealed away in shadow rupee stasis. Link draws the four sword and prepares to fight until we're blown away by a tornado. Takes me back. Waking up all my incapacitated friends, I started slicing away and picked up some force gems. This game's equivalent of rupees. I grabbed a bunch of the smaller ones and even snagged a big one just to be safe. These aren't rupees, but they sure are green. A Link Between Worlds is a kind of sequel slash remake of the Super Nintendo's A Link to the Past. The worlds feature many of the same layouts, areas, and occasionally even dungeons. So just like A Link to the Past, I expected these three pots to contain nothing but hearts. I was wrong. Sticking to the 3DS, I decided to boot up Triforce Heroes, a game known for taking the four sword style and just removing one of them. Me when I, me when I, me when I pick up a blue rupee. Triforce Heroes isn't exactly breaking any records, but I'll tell you for a fact, there are not many Zelda games I could wear a little bear on my shirt, and that means something to me. Lucky for us, we start with our sword and like 45 hearts so we can get right to lawn mowing. Me when I pick up a blue rupee. I'm just kidding. There's a big green right here. The Hyrule Warriors series features rupees essentially the same as any other Zelda game, except for you. I don't want to talk about you. Collect as many as you can to buy various things from the shop and upgrade your gear. Or you can hoard them and protect them. That's a better idea. Hyrule Warriors was originally released on the Wii U, but eventually got a port on Switch with the Definitive Edition. So today, we're not going to be playing either of those. Ah, oh, the smell of nitric acid in the morning. Hyrule Warriors Legends is the forgotten little brother of the series featured on the 3DS. I could have just as easily played a console version, but this is funnier. It's like I'm watching Sonic X on my Game Boy Advance. Fortunately, rupees come pretty quick. After mowing down a horde of Bokoblins, they were flooding the stage. Was this worth it? I'm, I'm really not sure. After all the rupee hunting we've gone through, there was officially only one final green left to be acquired. The last challenge, Breath of the Wild. Also, this was written and recorded before Tears of the Kingdom even came out, but I just wanted you to know I'm a solid 65 hours in at this point, and I have yet to find a green rupee anywhere. That's bullshit. I started up the game nervous, but more than ready to grab my final rupee. Soon, this would all be over. Yeah, not quite. I thought I would hop in and do my classic unk thing, you know? Chop some grass or break a pot. Little did I know that rupees cannot be found by chopping grass and there were no pots in sight. So how did I find a green rupee? I went through the eight gates of hell. That's right. They made an eighth one just because of this challenge. I started picking up some rocks, but all I found was a lizard and frog. Hmm. Green. I battled my first Bokoblin, and with some good rock chucking, I took him out. Still no rupee. A few more enemies later, and I found my first chest with some pants. I could probably try to sell these for a couple rupees, but I don't think these guys were buying. I don't get this game. Eventually, I clawed my way to my first Bokoblin camp. I surveyed the area and readied my assault. Surely once I defeated every last one, I would be rewarded greatly. Um, um, 
Um, yeah, it, it'll definitely light if I just keep firing. Instead of destroying the barrel itself, I realized I could drop down the lantern and cause an explosion. All it did was light a single guy on fire. I managed to drop a different lantern down and defeat the enemies. My reward for all that hard work was five fire arrows. Wow, if only I had some 10 minutes ago. Seemingly, the only way out of this cage was to advance the game's plot. So I climbed a tower and fought another Bokoblin camp, neither of which had anything of green potential. I decided to do this shrine to get the Magnesis ability, which would help me break some random objects and maybe find some rupees. I also accidentally tried to shield surf on an enemy twice. Now with Magnesis, I could get some chests that don't help me, break crates that don't help me, and get a Korok seed. This kind of helps. I don't know. I ran around in the dark of night, killing enemies and taking down camps and just everything I could and nothing seemed worth it until a beacon of hope rose from the ground. It's been a while since I fought one of these guys, but I remembered when you beat one, they shower precious gems all over the place. So I got to work, sniping his weak spot, scaling him like it was Shadow of the Damn Colossus, breaking every weapon I had at my disposal. I've never fought so hard for anything in my life, and finally, after a long, long night, he was defeated. I was eager to claim my prize. You can actually see the moment my soul left my body when I realized he doesn't drop rupees, but actual gems, and none of them are even green. I was distraught at this point. I couldn't cut grass and I couldn't throw pots. Dozens of enemies vanquished and yet not a single rupee to be claimed. I entered another shrine and got the bombs, hoping I might be able to find another way forward. Outside of the shrine, I discovered a Nintendo Switch shirt. I put it on just for some comfort and then, it happened. There was still another way I hadn't given nearly enough attention to. But I'd just like to thank the rocks for their service as well. The stone talus was trying to tell me something. He knew of my greater destiny, and he sent me here as his last wish. So I could pick up a random ass rock in the corner of this maze and find... The last green rupee. I hesitated for a long time. Maybe because I knew this meant I had reached my bittersweet end, or because I was just simply in shock and didn't know what to do. But eventually, I did it. I have officially acquired a green rupee in every Zelda game. Unless you count all the side games I didn't play. Give me a break, man. I, I don't want to play Tingle Time. I know it's in the title, but I can't trust that guy. Let me know if I should do this again with like blue or red rupees or something. Subscribe.